Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Zantanetti. Mm -hmm. And on today's uh, Word Nugget, we're just looking still into the book of Ephesians. Excuse me, I have to fix my shirt. And um, we're looking at Ephesians because Ephesians is a great book. I, actually, all the letters of Paul are magnificent. But I've been drawn to the book of Ephesians or the letter to the Ephesians, and we're just going to stay here a while. I call it swimming around for a while. We're going to swim around for a while. And uh, so what we're going to do now is look at the verse of Scripture we're dealing with today. And we're first chapter, the first chapter of Ephesians. And we dealt with the first verse and the second verse yesterday on how Paul, uh, the Apostle Paul, addresses the Ephesian church. And he says that he's an apostle by the will of God, Philema, the will of God. And the will of God represents a purpose and a decree, the purpose and a decree. And know that you were called with a purpose and a decree from heaven to be blessed. So he says to the, to the church of God, right? This is to the church, uh, the saints who are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Now, in verse 3, we have something that opens up that is magnificent. And remember that Paul, he's here in, in, in uh, the city of Ephesus. A lot of stuff is going on. In Paul's missionary trip, uh, you know, he brought many in the city to the feet of Christ. But it was not an easy task because remember that this city was given over to many arts of witchcraft and all kinds of evil. And so he had a work on his hand. Now, the, the city was famous for the magnificent temple of Donna, and of course it was given to much idolatry and of course witchcraft. But something happened while Paul was there, the Holy Spirit began to move because God wanted to establish a church at Ephesus. That is most definitely uh, the will of God for Ephesus at that time. And uh, it is modern day Turkey, so we know that God is still working in those cities. Isn't it amazing how God preserves, uh, you know, he preserves things for our time to see it and to see his magnificent hand working. Mm. Well, it was, such a, it was such a revival that watch what happens in the book of Acts before we go down to the verse. It says, many of them also were used, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and they found it to be 50,000 pieces of silver. Wow. That was about $5,000 at the time. That's a lot of money. A lot of money. And so, actually, uh, Judas received about 30 pieces of silver, which was about $3,000. So he was given a hefty price, uh, a lot of money, and, and uh, you know, to betray Christ. So, let's go now to, again, to the scripture. And it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. Now understand that, first of all, that these are called spiritual blessings. So what is a spiritual blessing? Well, it's definitely something that is not physical in that sense. So we're going to go into this and see exactly what God has done for us by giving us this heavenly blessing. Now the saints of the living God receive spiritual blessings because Christ, although he came in a physical body, he died, they put him in the grave physically, but he was raised with a spiritual body. And so that all the spiritual blessings of that spiritual man, Christ, will be e e internally and eternally. So what happens is that Jesus Christ physically came to the earth. Okay. In other words, God, the, the Bible says that the, oh, the fullness of the Godhead was in Christ. Was in Christ. It wasn't just an ordinary man. God was in Christ reconciling the world back to himself. Now think about this. So now God comes in a body, and we know that that body was destroyed by the hands of men. But the Bible says that he gave his life for the joy that was set before him. He endured such opposition from sinful men. He endured the cross because he knew what would be the benefits of his resurrection to a people that he had uh, cleansed by his blood. And the first thing that we have to see is that we were given as believers spiritually the resurrection 
of our salvation. Now understand that we are seated in heavenly places with with Christ. We're, we're there right now with him. We are present, although we are physically here on the earth. We are present with him. Even Paul says that when this tabernacle, this earthly tabernacle is destroyed, we already have one in heaven. Hallelujah. I don't know what that looks like, and I don't know how that works, but I know it is spiritual. So now understand also that the uh, God gives us a physical example of the spiritual reality in heaven when he gave Moses a command to build a sanctuary in the desert physically to give us a picture of the spiritual sanctuary in heaven. For we know that in, in Hebrews 9, and please take some time to read that, there is a tabernacle in heaven, uh, whatever that looks like. It may look like the earthly one, I don't know, but I know that there is one in heaven. And understand too this, right, that everything in heaven is tangible. It can be touched, but it's touched by spiritual beings. It's not touched by the physical. Now, if God wants to take us in the physical to see heaven and to walk around, and many have claimed to see in heaven, and many have claimed to touch things, that's his will. But remember, when you leave this earth, even physically, to go visit, you're in the spirit. <laughs> because the Bible tells us that John, he says, I was in the spirit on the day of the Lord, and the Lord called him up to heaven, and he saw great things. So this is why the church must fight a spiritual fight, because it is not physical. And that's why we need to stop fighting against each other. Because you know what? The fight that we fight is not, is, not, is not physical. It is spiritual. It is battling against, watch this, the principalities and powers and against rulers of darkness and the wickedness, the spiritual wickedness of this world. There's a spiritual wickedness happening right now that we can't see, but it's happening, and it's especially among the, the, the leaders of this world. Because remember, they rule, they set the laws, and so a lot of the impressions they're getting in their minds that they think is righteousness is evil, and it hurts people. There's a lot of evil people in the world, but I believe there are more good people than there are evil people in the world. Well, the Bible tells us that we were blessed by God the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ with spiritual blessings, and we're going to see exactly what that means in a moment. But we see that the first person of the Godhead, he is the God of the Christ, and Christ is over man and man is over woman. No matter how much we try to fight that, there is a divine order in heaven. It says that, that women is under men, or woman is under man, man is under Christ, and Christ is under God to show a divine order. And he chose and appointed an mediator, Christ, to come in a physical form, and he prepared for him a physical body, and he supported it while it went through trials and tribulations here on the earth, and he gave him the anointing to do that. And I want to let you know that no matter what you're going through in this earth, there's an anointing inside of you that is spiritual. And no matter what you go through on this earth, God keeps you and sustains you and supports you because you are his child and the anointing that you have abides in you. The Bible tells us in the first letter of John chapter 2 verse 20 and also you can read 27, the anointing that you received abides in you. It's inside of you. And this anointing is what keeps us going even through trials and tribulations. Let me tell you something. God is with his church. God is with his people, his congregation, the community of his Messiah. And Christ as a man, he prayed to God. As a man, he prayed to God. And he suffered my, a lot of things here on the earth, many things. But the Bible says that he learned obedience through the things he suffered. And thus he is the captain of our salvation. Hallelujah. He believed and hoped in the Father to teach us how to hope and believe in the Father. And having a relationship with him, we have relationship with him through the Lord Jesus Christ. And understand that this came about not by the will of any angel or any man or by, listen, or even by any adoption. Even though we know that Joseph was not the real father, the biological father of Jesus, but he took him in as a son. But understand that Christ was in the womb before even Joseph knew about it. 
Hallelujah. He was already there. God put him there. So it was by natural generation, and he being the only begotten son of the father, he is the proper son. He is the only son. And the same nature and perfections that God has is in the son. The Bible tells us that Christ in Hebrews chapter 1, and look at it, verse 1 through 3, he is the exact image of the God who is in heaven. And through him, God made all things. It is spiritual, folks. Let me tell you something. You can't touch light. No matter how much I try, I can't take this light and hold it in my hand. It's a different essence. And the things that we have are blessings from, from Jesus Christ. We cannot touch them with our hands per se because they're spiritual, but they can be manifested when he chooses to. It's not something that we do. The Holy Spirit has to do that. And even then, it is spiritual. When you do something with your hands and you bring a good work to someone or you do a good work unto someone, it is spiritual first. The Bible says that we are the workmanship of God in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus to do good works which he has already foreordained before even time began. How can we fathom that? We cannot, watch this, we cannot bless God or invoke or confer a blessing on him to say, God, be blessed today. He is the blesser. He is the one that gives us the blessing, but we congratulate him for his greatness. We congratulate him for his goodness and ascribe our blessings to him that he already gave to us. When we bless God, it's because he has blessed us to bless him. He is blessed and praised by the saints as God and Father and of Christ, because he is worthy of it. Now, let's talk about this in heavenly places, because we know that God is the author and the giver of all blessings. And we could talk about blessings that we receive on a daily. Come on, people give you blessings, and there's nothing wrong with that. But understand that the spiritual blessings actually started with Abraham. Abraham chapter 15 there and, and 17, 15 and 17 is a very important, uh, these two chapters are very important to see how the blessings of Abraham were given to us spiritually. The Bible tells us that we receive the spirit of Christ through Abraham, through Abraham. Now watch this. In chapter 15, we see that God appears to Abraham in a vision. The word of the Lord came to him in a vision. And as he began to speak to him, he begins to proclaim the blessings to Abraham. But watch this. Abraham says, you have not given me any seed. As a matter of fact, why don't we just go there right now real quick. And uh, let's look at it. All right. Excuse me. All right. Chapter 15, verse 1, it says, After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham. I am your shield and thy exceeding great reward. Listen, this is, this is God appearing to him in a vision, in a vision. I need you to keep that in mind. And, Ab and Abraham said to the Lord, what will you give me seeing I have no seed? You have not given me any seed. I go childless. <laughs> and he says, the one who's going to inherit the house, he says, is this Eleazar, um, or Eleazar, of Damascus, and he says, and Abraham said, or oh, Abram, behold, you have not given me any seed, and lo, the one born in my household is my heir. And God said, and behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, this shall not be your heir, but he that shall come forth from your own bowels shall be your heir. And I love this. And God brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward the heavens and tell the stars if you're able to number them. And, and watch it. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. This is the, let me, watch this now. This is the interesting thing about this vision. Most scholars and the text also may refer to that he actually had a vision in the daytime. So how could he see stars in the daytime? Because God wanted to show him that it was a miracle. However you look at it, it was a miracle. I wonder if for a moment in seeing the stars, he saw billions of people and said, look at this, count them if you can. Have you ever had a vision of seeing yourself preaching to millions of people? 
Have you have ever had a vision of yourself seeing yourself, um, you know, preaching to the multitudes? We all have, if we have the spirit of God, I mean, it's just natural in us for us to want to share the gospel with the whole entire world, right? Well, Abraham saw something in a vision that changed his life. And I want you to see something because also in chapter 17, God comes to Abraham and he, he gives him the circumcision as a covenant. Now the Lord's covenant connected a son from his own lawyers in chapter 15. This is interesting. The Lord's covenant connected the promise with the stars in chapter 15. The Lord's covenant of circumcision connected Abraham to the physical inheritance, which was Israel. And the faith of Abraham connected him with the Lord's righteousness. For the Bible says that Abraham believed and it was counted or credited to him as righteousness. This is spiritual. Righteousness of God is spiritual. And therefore, the Apostle Paul is teaching us that, watch this, all the blessings that we received are through the faith of the Son of God, and it is spiritual. We are righteous before God because of what Christ did on the cross. Now, I know that you cannot see blood, but we do confess the blood of Jesus Christ. It is, watch it, something physically came out of his body, but it is spiritual because we are covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. Don't ask me what that looks like. I do not know. But I know that Paul tells us that he has blessed us in every, watch this, with every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies. Now, when John went to the heavenlies, he saw a lot of things. He saw the angels. He saw the 24 elders, which represents the church. He saw multitudes. He saw everything in heaven that was to come. And yet it was spiritual because he says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And when he went to heaven, he saw the Lamb of God. And understand this. I want you to understand this, that human beings are a blend of character, intelligence, um, of values, and belief. And it is tangible. Watch this. It is the tangible spiritual assets that make up what a person is rather than what he or she projects. Let me explain that real quick. <laughs> it is very simple that God made us human, but yet, the spiritual qualities that makes us spiritual is in character, it is intelligence, it is in value and belief. If Watch this. If we are apart from Christ, all of those traits are perverted and defiled. But when we get saved, God's will is that our character becomes like Christ, that our intelligence picks up this word and God speaks into our intelligence and that intelligence becomes spiritual. You know what I'm talking about. There's sometimes you're reading the Bible and all of a sudden you stop and you kind of stare into space because you're having a lot of happenings in your mind, in your spiritual mind. You're having revelation and all revelation of God is light. And that's why you're going through those, uh, those wonderful times of, um, of seeing spiritual things because it is, watch this, although it is not tangible, yet we can see it. Peter was hungry and he went to the roof while he was at the house of Simon the Tanner and while he was cooking downstairs, Peter fell into a trance and saw a sheet. Watch this, a sheet lowered down by the four corners, a white sheet, and it came down and had all kinds of animals in it and they were domesticated animals that are unclean. And God told Peter, kill and eat. Now, wait a minute. He's looking at the sheet. He's looking at all these things in the spirit. He fell into a trance. And he saw these, all these animals and God said, kill and eat. And Peter said, see, he didn't understand it yet. He said, no, certainly not, Lord. I've, I've never put anything unclean into my mouth. In other words, he was a practicing Jew. He ate according to the Torah. And so God tells him again, he says, he says, you know, kill and eat. And he says, no, he says, do not call unclean what I have made clean. And to this, he was referring to the Gentile nation that he wanted him to take the gospel, the spiritual gospel. How many of you know that the gospel is spiritual? And he wanted Peter to take the gospel to the Gentiles to preach the, 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 uh, the repentance of the Lord and to preach salvation. And when he finished, the Bible says that God told Peter, don't be afraid. There's going to be men. There are men that are coming to, 
to uh, to ask of you, uh, you know, to see where you are. And uh, don't be afraid to go with them. And he went with them, and he winds up in the in the house of Cornelius, a cohort, an Italian soldier. Watch this. And he preaches the gospel. Watch this. He's preaching the spiritual gospel to physical people. They believe, and the Holy Spirit spiritually comes into them. And they are baptized with the Spirit of God, speaking in tongues. And Peter, with his companions, says, can we deny? How can we, how, can we, can we stop them from being baptized, seeing that God has poured upon them too? The blessing poured upon them the Spirit. And he baptized that family. And the Gentile world was open because of Peter and, and, uh, and Paul. Now watch, this is interesting. When you look at the spiritual blessings that God has given us, the Holy Spirit brings clarity through the blessings. Watch this. And he gives it to us so that we, 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 in a plural form, not a singular form, can be a blessing to the world. When the church learns the principle of us and not you, the spiritual blessings will begin to manifest so that the world will see the love of the Savior and his people. Now, I want to conclude with this. I said us and not you. In, in the first letter of John, chapter 1, verse 5 through 9, it's interesting how the Bible tells us, and you know, you know what, why don't we just go there real quick so we can just look at the verse of Scripture because I want you to see it, I want you to hear it. I said I want you to see it. Well, how are you going to see it? Because as I read it, you're going to be able to see it in your mind and in your heart. So here we go. First John chapter one, verse one. And it says that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled the word of truth. They touched Jesus. They were with Jesus all the time. I believe he hugged them a lot. I believe he, he loved on them. And yet, Watch this. The reality of spiritual things were in that body. All of heaven was in that body. Everything of the Godhead was in that body. It was spiritual, but yet it was physical because it manifested. The Bible says, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested, that he might destroy all the works of the devil. Now watch this now, which we have heard which our hands have handled of the word of truth or the word of life for the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you the eternal life which was with the father and was manifested to us watch this now that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you we that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the father and with his son Jesus Christ, and these things we write unto you, that your joy may be full. Now watch this. And this is the message. God is light, and there is no darkness in him. And if we say that we walk in the light, if we say we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Watch this. Us. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. If we say, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Notice he's talking plural here. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and forgive our sins. Watch this now. Do you know the sin we're talking about here? Segregation. How can the world receive truly the spiritual blessings that come through Christ if we are divided? I want to bring this home to you. If we confess the sin of our segregation, if you look, you keep reading this book, this letter, 1 John, you're going to see how they were false prophets who went out from the church. I mean, it's, it's, it's tremendous. The whole book is on love, knowledge, truth and falsehood. And yet he says he has given us a spiritual blessing in heaven. And that spiritual blessing, number one, is one. I think someone said it well when they said that the body of Christ is suffering from a, 
a, a vitamin called B1. If we're going to be one, we must understand that the spiritual blessing we first received was salvation and through the resurrection of Jesus, through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, to become one body. You see what's happened to the church? To the spiritual blessing of really, watch this, of really being a blessing to the world. The spiritual blessing was given to us that we might be one, but we're so segregated. Let's heal that. Whenever you disagree with someone, let's heal that. God bless you. Have a wonderful spirit-filled day. And remember, we were given a spiritual blessing to walk in the spirit and to manifest the love of Christ in the physical. God bless.